What I'm about to show is a dissection of a chinchilla, so if you're squeamish, now's your chance to look away. Unfortunately, this young chinchilla died due to a penile fur ring, a common medical condition in male chinchillas. The owner graciously allowed the filming of this video for educational purposes. As part of any exam on a male chinchilla, I always check the phallus for fur rings. When a ring of fur gets trapped around it, it can cut off circulation, leading to urethral blockage. If the chinchilla is unable to urinate, deadly toxins can build up in the body, leading to death. Here I am starting with a midline approach to the abdomen. When doing any surgery, especially on rodents, abdominal incisions must be delicately made as to not puncture any of the GI tract underneath. Since this chinchilla was young, his scrotal sacs were not as apparent and his testes were in his abdomen. As you can see, his bladder was quite large and inflamed. Although not shown, I removed some of the urine with a syringe. Now on to the rest of the abdomen. Chinchillas have a typical liver and a gallbladder nestled between the lobes. What makes their gastrointestinal tract unique is that they are hindgut fermenters, which means they have a large cecum that contains most of their beneficial gut bacteria, in addition to their stomach, small intestines, and colon. I just finished filling the stomach for any abnormal material. This leads into the small intestine, as you can see here. The small intestine is divided into the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. The cecum, which lies between the small intestine and the large intestine, is where fermentation takes place and cellulose is broken down. After spending some time in the cecum, the digesta then moves into the colon, where it is slowly formed into tiny pellets, as you see here. The walls of the intestine are incredibly thin and see-through at this point. The entire length of the intestines can reach over 2 meters in adult species. Behind all of the intestines, you can see the two kidneys located here and here. Next, we move on to the chest. Here you can see the heart and thymus. And on either side of the heart, you can see the lungs. The lungs aren't as pink as I would expect them to be, so it's possible there was pathology here as well. Lastly, I look at the teeth. The front teeth were normally occluded, and although I didn't show the cheek teeth, they were normal as well. Once again, thank you to the owner for graciously allowing us this educational dissection, and if you have any questions, please ask him in the comments.